uh, wind load is very very important and governing factor actually uh, for any steel building or for any uh, pipe track wind load is very important and is always the governing factor uh, like if you ask me my experience about um, uh, steel structures and pipe track there are 95 percent uh, cases uh, there are wind load is governing and there are just four to five percent that the envelope case will be other than wind load so wind load, wind load is very important actually um so wind load is very important and governing factor for pipe rack design pipe racks are generally open structure and thus mainly affected by wind application the wind load is calculated as per is 875 part 3 depending upon the areas and the other parameters like the length height of the structure the wind load varies with respect to highs and terrain conditions now i don't know how you people are uh, well aware of is 875 part 3 mm -hmm. but you have to well uh, adhere to this code because uh, if you don't know this code then it will be very difficult for you people to like apply the wind load now as i said wind load is a very governing factor when it comes to steel structure and our pipe racks are mostly open structures actually if you are uh, obviously you are you must be knowing about is 875 and there are categories like open structure and closed structure our pipe racks are generally open structure most of that mostly they are open structure and in some of the cases they are they may be open or they may be closed structure by uh, or closing by cladding or any other so there are two uh, uh, things uh, as per act 875 or oh, one is for open structure and one is for closed structure you are knowing uh, that uh, the pipe rack which you are going to design is in which area so uh, according to that you have to find out the basic wind speed which is very uh, easily available in the code then according to that um, thing you have to calculate k1 k2 k3 k4 k1 is a risk factor k2 is a topography factor k3 is a terrain factor k4 is newly added that is uh, what you can say a uh, risk factor or uh, the cyclone factor so you have to go through uh, the S875. Uh, then you have to uh, you have to consider your length, your height, then your width. All these parameters are very important when you are calculating wind load. And as the height increases, obviously that is very logical. As the height increases, the wind load gets increased. So as per that, you have to uh, you have to calculate the load. You have to apply the load. But this is very important. I'm, I I I uh, need to tell you that uh, you have to uh, do these calculations very thoroughly because uh, if you do mistakes in wind load, then uh, the results which you are getting maybe are uh, like uh, uh, wrong. So that wind load is very very important actually. Uh, so as I said that uh, as per 875, you need uh, you you need to get uh, the main speed then k1 k2 k3 k4 then you will be getting the pressure zone like a vz pressure is equal to 0.6 vz square then you up, accordingly that you have to apply suction pressure leeward windward that that all cases you will be getting in is 875 upon that uh, instead okay we'll discuss our, our start later on so this is the basic thing actually wind load very important so bookmark the wind load and pipe rack very important okay now earthquake load now earthquake earthquakes are not uh, so governing factor for any steel structure or pipe racks though earthquake seismic loads is not governing factor for any steel structure and thus pipe racks are studied uh, but uh, uh, define but we define seismic parameters as per i guess 1893 2016 according to code we have to define zone factor Bottom factor and other factor are mentioned. So as I said, uh, uh, earthquake is there are many uh, rare chances that earthquake is governing factor when it comes to steel structure, especially pipe racks. Very rare chances. But uh, now see, we have code uh, for earthquake that is 1893-2016, which is the latest edition. Indian code says that uh, like. Uh, uh, our 800 800 is for steel so it is said that we have to apply earthquake 
so no matter uh, it is like applicable or not it is uh, uh, what you can say it is uh, governing or not we have to apply so there are many methods so to apply there is a uh, response reduction factor is method is there srq method is there so accordingly any method you can apply and uh, if you are well aware of code or at least you are you must be knowing that there are some factors like zone factor importance factor then damping ratio uh, then soil conditions we have to uh, define those things when you are come again when you are uh, designing or analyzing into a star pro so that is the thing and one important part is that wind and earthquakes are uh, those are the um, loads which cannot act simultaneously so when they are making load combinations they are not putting up wind and earthquake together because that is not going to happen uh, as per the study thermal loads are defined as a self straining forces arising from contraction or expansion resulting from temperature change thermal loads may be caused by changes in ambient temperature or may be caused by the design uh, operating temperature of the load these are the friction forces on the pipe rack structural member caused by the sliding of the pipe in response to the thermal expansion due to design of the temperature now as i said uh, see uh, you are designing pipe uh, racks so but means generally uh, as a structural engineer we don't need to bother that what exact um, uh, like material is going through or the fluid is going through but when you are applying thermal load you have to understand uh, the basic behavior of the fluid because as i said when see when it is a plain straight pipe rack there is a no issue in case of thermal loading but when it comes to uh, like uh, the h or a z or, or shaped pipe rack uh, where it is possible uh, to have the joint so when it, uh, at the joint uh, uh, as we all know that at the joint there are maximum chances of the uh, generating friction force and they, that is the point where we are getting the maximum stress uh, so if it is a water then we don't need to worry about that but if it is any uh, like hot fluid or uh, or the fluid with the irrespective uh, characteristic then we have to take care of that and this thermal loads also being provided by the uh, clients actually so we have to provide that and they are uh, been giving a particular temperature so that temperature we have to apply in each possible direction uh, into the stand because see this th uh, application of thermal loads so uh, then earthquake uh, loads and the wind loads in manual design it's very difficult very tedious actually that is almost impossible to if you are doing it manually and applying applying them this is i'm talking on basis of the stad pro and here also sometimes we take uh, uh, mtn operating thermal loads we need to consider that uh, with respective team because i have been taken that kind of cases earlier like uh, in thermal loads also like 40% of mt and 60% of as per given data and code provided by contractor the formation of load combination is very important factored and unfactored load combination is to be formed wind and earthquake doesn't act simultaneously load combinations for dead load live load and wind load is to be derived or formed uh, load combinations for dead load live load and earthquake uh, now as i said uh, that wind load and earthquake doesn't act they don't act simultaneously and uh, if you see our is 800 uh, for steel and is 456 for concrete they have given the load combination like we have to take care of uh, the factor load cases as well as the unfactored uh, load cases okay even though that is very much uh, what you can say or uh, clear that the governing cases or the envelope case will be factored one only but we take the unfactored loads itself because as the code says to us so there are some load cases like dead load plus live load is there dead load plus so uh, live load plus wind load dead load plus wind load or oh, live load plus wind load or uh, then 1.5 dead load plus live load then 1.2 dead load plus live load plus earthquake load 
uh, likewise you have to form the dead load or oh, oh, sorry not dead load you have to uh, form the load combinations and as per the code or given by um, what you can say given by data or any other particular code then you have to form the load combinations this is all about the uh, like the pipeline co the basic uh, design and analysis of pipeline like how to what you can say how to um, uh, see the site condition then how to apply the loads or how to form the load or the bifurcation of the loads and load combinations this is all about we talked about uh, this particular thing uh, now pipe track design in stad uh, see as i said the pipe track is a very vast topic it's nearly impossible to design pipe track uh, you know uh, manually uh, because the manual design is limited up to a certain thing you uh, if you have to design it then application of like wind load earthquake and thermal uh, while uh, manual designing it's very difficult actually so that uh, we are uh, having an easy source and that is a stad pro pipe track design in stad so the, these are the uh, points to be noted first is geometry then support then loading load combination analysis and design no geometry geometry is either be given or you have to form uh, see sometimes what happens sometimes uh, uh, the client or the vendor is just giving the line or layout like the exterior lines so in between you have to um, like form a geometry form frame and you have to um, like uh, do it accordingly or in some cases it is directly given by client the frame the whole frame like i want in a this manner only because some company or some contractors have their own standards actually it is depends actually on the one thing is that you have to or prepare by your own framing or the second is the framing is given by so while um, doing geometry um, there is no um, access to um, Oh, like go uh, to um, me remember but uh, just make sure that uh, there shouldn't be any uh, duplicated node or beam i hope you must be knowing little bit about stars regarding that only um, so that is about geometry so there is no like hard and fast rule about geometry just make sure that it will be very simple and uh, the beam number and the node number should be um, like in a um, uh, linear format and there shouldn't be any duplicated nodes and things then supports supports uh, now supports if you are uh, um, see now there are possibility that you may give fixed or pin support see uh, if your column is like of rcc and uh, then your uh, pipe rack is of steel then obviously you have to um, uh, like uh, define uh, the column up to the foundation level then you have to fix the uh, then you have to give the fixed support in case if you are giving uh, the column support till the base plate then you have to give the pin support actually okay then loading as discussed about you have to give the loading like dead load live load then wind load earthquake load thermal load apart from this i don't think so there will be any other loads in thermal load there might be chances to get the anchorage load because of uh, sometimes what happens you know the pipe racks are anchored to the uh, platform um, which is uh, which it passing through there are some chances that you may get the anchorage uh, or forces as well um, as we discussed that uh, operating dead load and um, what is and say uh, empty dead load apart from that the framing is uh, the framing load is given uh, uh, tech is uh, take care of by giving self fed command so you don't need to put an extra effort on that platform load if it is there then you have to give either float load or udl that's your choice how to give or uh, then wind load okay wind load one part is like from calculating the is875 and the second part is that you can give wind load directly from the stack itself so how to do now it's not possible to show but uh, if it is possible if we are uh, we are arranging next lecture in upcoming days so i'll show or uh, regarding that how to apply wind load directly from star or uh, in that case you have to calculate um, uh, see now uh, i'm telling you two cases one is from calculating 875 
so when you are calculating from 875 you have to uh, like go uh, calculate as per the height like 5 meter 10 meter 15 meter so you know for that particular zone you are getting different udl and you have to apply that udl manually or not manually or like by giving the different load command also that is kind of tedious thing actually because you know if the mm, structure is too huge then it's very uh, difficult to get to calculate all the loads and apply it on scale that what you have to do you have to just uh, uh, put up uh, the intensity and with respect to height suppose for 5 meter is 1.2 suppose for 10 meter it's 2 and vice versa so you have to give it to start you have to give this input to start and then you have to give some commands and then it will automatically um, uh, apply um, by uh, giving some commands so now it's not possible to show but uh, likewise we can do uh, in another way but if you are doing pipe pack for the very first time or for just to understanding so i suggest uh, that you do it by uh, like the calculating the real forces so at least you will be knowing what exactly you are doing and how or uh, like you are applying the forces so at the first it would be always great to do manual designing because once you get into that software zone no then it will be very uh, you know you you get to understand only that software language only so first i would always recommend it, recommend you to do things manually whether it is like a designing of a small compression member or a small tension member or whatever it is then the earthquake load earthquake load also there is some procedure or uh, to apply instead so that is also not possible to show now but you have to like as i said that you have to define the parameters like zone factor or zone factor importance factor damping ratio then soil conditions time power period there are many parameters and i believe that this analysis is kind of tricky and tedious actually you have to like uh, go through uh, the deep, uh, go through the code uh, very deeply then only you will understand and the thermal load as i said thermal load like how to apply thermal load here also you can uh, get the data from the vendor then you can bifurcate um, by 40 percent 60 percent fk on operating now load combinations also i have already told you that even in uh, even in stad putting up the load combination there is a, a like a, a specific syntax actually so that is uh, we'll uh, we'll discuss later on like how to put up the load combination syntax see stad is a language actually obviously uh, it is not like uh, what you are uh, uh, whatever you are like in giving input that stad has to understand actually it's not like that you are giving something and stad has to accept no stad is a what you can say of program so you have to behave likewise and you have to provide syntaxes if you don't provide the proper syntaxes then there might be a possibility to get the errors and it will not perform any analysis and design so you have to understand and learn some kind of syntax from the stand okay now after uh, completing geometry or uh, property or uh, sorry one point i'm missing is properties actually after geometry how to provide property like uh, uh, what is your member size like ismb 150 ismb 200 ismc 150 whatever that i miss, missed actually so then you have to provide the material properties like density of the steel or density of the concrete and uh, what you can say modulus of elasticity of strength so you have to uh, provide that then after geometry or uh, properties support loading load combination you have to do analysis then analysis if you are getting any errors then you have to resolve and then after that the last part is design Stad, there are many codes in stad inbuilt so if uh, now we are considering is 800 so as per 800 we have to give some parameters and we have to do design so this uh, pipe rack design in stad is a huge topic that will take another what you can say few hours so i'm just giving you the like what you can say the basic idea about like um, how to do pipe rack design in stad 